Hello and welcome to Baiju's IAS. Let's take up the daily quiz for today. The first question, which of the following statements are correct? The Quad is an informal strategic forum between the United States, Japan, Australia and India. It was initiated as a dialogue in 2007 by the then Prime Minister Shinzo Abe of Japan. These countries also take part in a naval exercise known as Malabar. All the three statements are correct, so option D is the right answer. See, the Quad or the Quadrilateral is an informal diplomatic grouping involving the US, Japan, Australia and India. Initially, the idea was proposed by Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and with the support of then Indian Prime Minister Manmohan Singh and with the support of US and Australia, this initiative was taken up from 2007 onwards. Post-2007, this informal grouping did not receive much significance initially. But in the recent years, it has emerged as a major strategic forum that is focused on the Indo-Pacific region and many experts have labelled it as a grouping that is designed to target Chinese influence in the Indo-Pacific region. The stated objective of the Quad is to enforce a rules-based order in the Indo-Pacific region, which is often seen as an indirect reference to China because of its aggression in the South China Sea with regard to its maritime disputes, during which China has repeatedly violated the rules-based order that has been laid down under international law. China's aggressive behaviour in the South China Sea dispute is in violation of the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea and hence these members of the Quad they have sought to enforce a rules-based order in the Indo-Pacific region. This question on the quadrilateral has been asked because of a related article in the Hindu newspaper. It refers to a meeting of the foreign ministers of the Quad countries and during this meeting, the members have discussed the current situation in Myanmar. Both India and US, they have expressed concern about the developments in Myanmar which has resulted in the imposition of emergency and the restoration of military rule in the country. So both India and US have called upon Myanmar to respect rule of law and apart from that, the four member countries have also highlighted the need to enforce the rules-based international order in the Indo-Pacific region. Now let's look at the second question. Who amongst the following are not part of Niti Aayog's governing council? Prime Minister, President, Chief Ministers or the Lieutenant Governors of Union Territories? The correct answer would be option B, two only. Only the President of India amongst the given options is not a part of Niti Aayog's governing council. This question has been asked because we have a related article in the Hindu. The article refers to the meeting of the Niti Aayog's governing council which has been scheduled for February 20th which would be chaired by the Prime Minister. See, the governing council of the Niti Aayog is a key decision-making body of the Niti Aayog which functions as a think tank of the government. This governing council is headed by the chairman of Niti Aayog who is none other than the Prime Minister. Apart from the Prime Minister, the Governing Council also includes the Chief Ministers of all the states, the Lieutenant Governors of Union Territories and as well as several Union Ministers and Senior Government Officials who will be invited to take part in the meeting of the Governing Council. The Governing Council meeting shall also be attended by several ex-officio members such as the Union Ministers who will be invited the Vice Chairman of the Niti Aayog, the members and the CEO of Niti Aayog and other relevant senior government officials. Now let's take up the third question. Which of the following statements are correct? K9 Vajra is a self-propelled howitzer being produced indigenously for the Indian Army. It is based on the M777 howitzers of the United States. It is yet to be inducted into service. Amongst the given statements, only the first statement is correct, so option A is the right answer. See, the K9 Vajra is a self-propelled howitzer that is being produced indigenously by LNT for the Indian Army. This artillery gun is based on the K9 Thunder, which is an advanced howitzer developed by a South Korean defense firm. India has signed an agreement with South Korea to procure this technology and through transfer of technology, India's LNT is indigenously producing these artillery guns. And LNT has already produced 100 such K9 Vajras 
which have already been inducted into the Indian Army. However, India has signed a parallel deal with the US as well to procure the M777 Howitzers for the Indian Army. But as you can see, the second and the third statements are incorrect. This question has been asked because we have a related article in the Hindu newspaper. The article refers to the delivery of the 100th K9 Vajra artillery gun or the self-propelled howitzer to the Indian Army by LNT. The K9 Vajra is the Indian variant of the K9 Thunder developed in South Korea and India has procured this technology and the guns are being indigenously produced by LNT. Let's look at the fourth question. India's Sagar Doctrine would apply to which of the following countries? See, Sagar Doctrine stands for security and growth for all in the region. So now let's look at the options. Sri Lanka, Maldives, Mauritius, Madagascar, Comoros. The correct answer is option D. India's Sagar Doctrine is primarily focused on India's foreign policy in the Indian Ocean region and it applies for all the mentioned countries over here. This question has been asked because according to this article in the Hindu, India's foreign minister is all set to visit Maldives and Mauritius and during this visit, India would be looking to take forward the Sagar doctrine that was brought out by Prime Minister Modi in 2015. In 2015, when Prime Minister Modi visited Mauritius and Seychelles, he spelt out India's Sagar doctrine under which India guarantees security and growth for all the countries in the Indian Ocean region. Essentially, India wants to be seen as the net security provider of the region by ensuring the economic security and maritime security of all the major countries in the Indian Ocean. Let's look at the fifth question. Which country has introduced the new media bargaining code that requires big tech companies like Google and Facebook to enter into agreements with news outlets that result in a commercial contract for showing the latter's content on their platforms? The correct answer is option C, Australia. See, Australia is currently involved in a legal battle with big tech companies such as Facebook and Google. This conflict is related to the dispute between news outlets and the social media companies that provide a platform for these news outlets to share their news content. See, currently on social media platforms, the news articles that is produced by the news outlets or the media outlets is carried and the users of social media platforms, they not only read these news articles, but they also share them widely. So essentially, these social media companies have provided a platform to these media outlets to further increase the reach of their content. But at the same time, we should also note that the media outlets are incurring sufficient expenses to generate these news articles and to carry out fact-checking. And hence, they expect that the news content that is hosted on social media platforms should fetch adequate revenues for them. Currently, the news publishers and the media outlets, they get only a portion of the ad revenues that are generated from their content and a large part of this revenue is taken away by the social media companies. So this has led to a conflict between the media houses and the social media companies and both have been competing for this ad revenue. So to address this dispute, the Australian government has recently introduced a law which is being referred to as the New Media Bargaining Code according to which the big tech companies are required to enter into agreements with media outlets and this would be a commercial contract. Under this contract, the social media firms will have to pay more for the media outlets for showing the content of these outlets on their platforms. So this new law is being opposed by the social media companies and they have strongly pushed back and they have decided to block the users from Australia from reading or sharing any news articles, both local and international news articles, on their respective platforms. Now let's take up a practice question from the 2020 prelims paper. Consider the following statements. The weightage of food in Consumer Price Index or CPI is higher than that in WPI or the Wholesale Price Index. The WPI does not capture changes in the prices of services which CPI does. RBI has now adopted WPI as its key measure of inflation and to decide on changing the key policy rates. Amongst the given statements, the third statement is incorrect, so option A is the right answer. See, measuring inflation through CPI index 
provides for greater weightage for food items than WPI index and WPI does not capture changes in the prices of services which is actually captured by the CPI index. So the first two statements are correct. However, RBI is using the CPI index as the key measure of inflation and for deciding the key policy rates, not the WPI. So hence, option A is the right answer. Now coming to the fact of the day, let's have a discussion on the Delimitation Commission. See, the Delimitation Commission is a statutory authority that is set up by the Government of India as per the provisions of the Delimitation Commission Act in order to carry out the delimitation exercise. So first you need to understand what is delimitation. See, delimitation is the act of redrawing the boundaries of an electoral constituency. This could include the Lok Sabha constituency or the constituency of the assemblies. So under delimitation, the constituency boundaries are redrawn in order to represent the changes in the population and in this process, the number of seats that have been allocated to a state may also change. The primary purpose of delimitation is to ensure that there is equal representation for equal population amongst all the segments. This will provide for a fair division of geographical areas within a given state and it ensures that no political party enjoys an unfair advantage. It basically provides for a level playing field for elections. This commission is extremely powerful because it is not just an independent body but also its final orders cannot be challenged in any court of law and even though the orders are laid in front of the parliament and the respective state legislatures, no modifications are allowed to the recommendations of the delimitation commission. This commission is usually headed by a retired judge of the Supreme Court accompanied with one election commissioner and few other government officials. Once the delimitation commission finalizes the boundaries of the Lok Sabha and the assembly constituencies, it cannot be called into question by any other institution. This is what makes the delimitation commission so powerful and it's an independent statutory body. This exercise is done on the basis of the previous census and the first such exercise was taken up in 1950-51. But back then, we did not have the delimitation commission and hence, the exercise was carried out by the election commission itself under the name of the president. But following this first delimitation exercise, the Delimitation Commission Act was brought out in 1952. And since then, four such delimitation commissions have been set up in 1952, 63, 73 and 2002. These four delimitation commissions have carried out the exercise based on the last census report. For example, under the Delimitation Act of 2002, the exercise was carried out as per the census data of 2001. The next delimitation will be taken up only after 2026. So based on the census data of 2031, the next delimitation exercise will be taken up and for that, a new delimitation commission will be constituted by passing an appropriate act. This question has been asked because we have a press release from the PIB which refers to the delimitation commission which has held talks in Jammu and Kashmir in order to redraw the boundaries of its constituencies following the reorganization of the state into a union territory. So with this, we conclude the discussion for today. Thanks for watching.